I'm Ludwig Hilk. Um, I work at the Rheinland Le Mans Institute um, for the last uh, 10 years. Um, I'm a researcher in um, transformation of energy system unit. Um, Rainer Le Mans was a um, pioneer for solar energy in Germany, founded one of these large solar companies like Hughes and Solon, um, and established a the Rainer Le Mans Foundation, which is, um, which is our founding agency um, since 2010. Um, we are focusing on, on renewable energies and 100% uh, renewable energies in energy systems in the transformation of energy systems, off-grid and mobility sector. Um, as we are a non-profit institute and have somehow like a, um, a shiny and quite idealistic person behind um, our institute, um, we are quite committed to open source and open science. So these open science um, practices, um, we try to, to, to be front runners of open source, open data and open access um, uh, research. <laughs> um, I'm currently managing the um, data management and open science uh, unit. Um, Christian uh, from my team here as well, we focus on research data management databases, data processing, ontology, knowledge graph development, and everything connected to licensing, open source, open data, open access stuff. So we're quite committed in that area. We also do modeling, Ermov, Pipesa modeling, power grids, open ego, and a lot of visualization tools to bring the tools into um, action. So this is my first introduction. So who am I? Why am I here? Um, I participated in around eight open mod sessions already, um, quite a lot of travel around Europe um, and always happy to see um, faces that uh, already knew from the other ones and a lot of new faces. So um, I have uh, presented the slides. So, so now we go to what is open mod? Where do we come from? What do we have? What are our achievements? What has been established? So. Um, perhaps you recognize some of these pictures. They are from the um, from the Berlin workshop. We presented there a a nice five year um, anniversary with over two hundred people. So these pictures are from Zurich. This one is Frankfurt, and the other one is Stockholm. I think I'm not hundred percent sure. But so um, this is for today. It's not on the agenda yet but we have to take a group picture today. So be prepared before lunch um, that we're gonna put one in our uh, archive um, to have, have this. Um, yes, next slide please. Um, so what is the Open Mart? The Open Mart is a grassroots initiative since 2014. It started as a couple of PhD students um, where I wasn't involved who asked like, okay, how can we bring open source into the energy modeling world. They were not able to use the existing closed source tools like Times or uh, other known closed um, projects. So they had, each PhD student had to write their own code and they said, okay, let's team up, let's join forces, let's create a platform to share information, code and data sets to do open research. The open mod is also an interesting group for lobbying for transparency and open, openness. So we are trying to influence the people, influence the funding agencies, influence governmental organizations to go for open source modeling and also influence our own research institutes. We, from, from the start of this, this program of the open mod, there were a lot of people who, who were not able to do open source modeling in their institutes. This has changed in the last couple of years. And right now, a lot of institutes have their own open science and open source um, guidelines to, to support doing this. But in, when we started, this was not, um, this was not the baseline of, of our work. So that's the first large uh, achievement that we did that we made open source modeling mainstream. Um, the open mod is also a network to exchange results, ideas, and of course our problems. And um, these, we have the mailing list with over a thousand uh, participants. There are a lot of stuff going around 
and of course the workshops, a safe place for energy system modelers where you can talk especially about your models and your problems of your models. So this is a forum where you can you can exchange the ideas of and what is not working with your code and try to fix it together. And of course, the Open Mod is a series of workshops and community events in the last years offline, but now online again. Um, in the first years, we had Open Mod workshops twice a year, and now we are happy to have one this year. And we, this is up to the discussion: where is the next one, and do we stick with a yearly rhythm or do we go to a, a uh, twice a year again? So this is up to discussion. Depends on who is volunteering and um, how big the um the need is and from the participation list i think there's room for more people and more workshops so what has the open mod what do we have established what is our infrastructure and first of all the open mod is no it's not an agency it's not a physical stuff we don't even have a fine or like a foundation stuff so it is all maintained by people. So thanks again for all the people who volunteer and provide infrastructure for this community. This is a website, which is really quite basic from the beginning. I think they haven't changed anything, but it is an entry point to the mailing list. It is an entry point to the Wiki, which has, has been established right in the beginning. And of course, um, the forum, which you all had to use to register. Um, and of course, the mailing list on um, on the Google group. So the um, one, one go back. The um, the forum now is the central hub for communication of this community. The mailing list is for announcing stuff and pointing at stuff. The forum is where we can be active and exchange ideas. Um, all breakout groups that we'll have today should be documented right in the forum. Um, this is really important. I, I come to this point later on. So what do we have as well for, uh, we have social media, there's a YouTube account uh, with a couple of videos and live streams um, from sessions. There is a GitHub account, which is quite old and not really used, but there is some, some software that was written to, um, to create a, a workshop um, um, stuff to, to do, um, a registration so there is some shared code we have a twitter account which is maintained by some person and perhaps in future um, some mastodon and another group um robbie uh, please wave uh, so that you all know robbie he maintains uh, mostly the, the forum and he has compiled a really nice list of all these infrastructure which i used for this talk um and uh, wrote who is responsible for which part of this so this is not something that has been decided to do. Like people do it. If you want to do it, just do it. And then communicate it and share it with the other ones. Um, yes. So what makes the open mod special? It's not the infrastructure. It's not high fancy infrastructure. We just have like basic stuff of what makes it special is these workshops, these kinds of events where we come together, where we can exchange ideas. Um, I went through all of the last 10 open mods and estimated the number of participants. There were over 670 participants, not unique participants. I didn't do that, um, but counted the number of persons. There were over 133 breakout groups, duosons, writersons, and discussion groups. There were over 140 lightning talks and presentation. I didn't count the online presentations there, but only the, the live sessions. And there were over 10 trainings. And today, if you count, the six tra or five trainings that we had. So we are 50 now. Next slide, please. So um, the 10th open mod was, so I'm a data scientist, sorry, I could not resist. Um, the 10th okay. open mod in Berlin was a large one with over 200 participants and a lot of um, a lot of people. And the other ones were around 50 to 100 participants um, and the number of talks and um and breakout groups corresponding to the number of participants. So today we are around 60 people and we estimate around 10 to 20 breakout groups, workathons and discussion forums. So that you get an inter, uh, like a small introduction of what did we do, what, what have, we, have we done and 
what is the, the kind of stuff that we that we want to do in the open world. So this is all what we have done. Now, that, now it's a, a part of the challenge. And this is my personal perspective. And this is a part of um, what I could consider the, the keynote of what comes up in the future. Where are the problems of our community? What do we have to tackle? The first one, of course, we have to tackle climate change. So <laughs> I think this is probably what we all brings us together. We are modeling in the energy sector. This is our driving force behind it. And this is something if we go really deep into our models, into the code, we sometimes forget like, what is the main challenge that we have to tackle. So we have to work on this together. This is something, a, an Excel code and a, a proprietary code won't save us from climate change. I think this is for sure. We have now 10, 15 years of climate research didn't solve this crisis. I'm not sure, but I think open science can be a solution to it. I'm not 100% sure if it will be, but this is my aim of going in this direction. So um, who of you knows this graph? Yeah, it's a really famous one. I really love it from Stefan Fenninger. Um, unfortunately, he's not here. Um, one of the early um, participants of the Open Mod. Um, and this shows a little bit of what our linear research graph is. So we do some data collection, we process it, we select the best ones, we make assumptions. There's an overlap between data and source code, like data processing, manual or scripting. We have our modeling software, like quite diverse ecosystem. Um, we do, do have raw results, we do process them, and then we have to interpret them, have to write papers about it and publish that. So there is a full cycle of open science if you condense it to software data and open access. There are also other parts like open methodologies um, and which I won't tackle here, but these are the main pillars that we have to tackle. And of course the open mod always focuses on the models in the center. This is like one of the core topics we talk about. But of course, um, if you are from a database perspective like me, the data is always in the center and the models turn around it. And of course, research is not a linear process. We live in a hamster wheel and we start projects again and again. So from a database perspective, we bend this project, this, this process and all starts and ends with data we want to exchange. And this is our the biggest challenge. How do we get data sets, results shared across modeling teams, shared across modeling experts from life cycle assessment, energy from the grid section, from all these different kinds, from household level to macroeconomic level. So we need to have exchange of data sets because these models can cover everything. So we need to work together with climate people, with people from, from, a, um, from, from economic perspective, people from social economic perspective. So an exchange of data sets and these results is, is a key in my perspective. I'm a, a data engineer, so I have to take <laughs> this, uh, to think like that. And um, this is why, why the idea of a framework for research data management was born in the open mod some, I think, uh, five years ago um, in the open mod in, in London. Mm -hmm. There was a group said, okay, we need to establish a common database for the open mod. So we don't have common models. And um, me and my team, we took up this idea and brought it into, into reality. This is why I want to present you the Open Energy family. Um, it's an ecosystem of tools which are not bound to one specific energy system model, but are as broad to cover all of them. So a universal database for open data, a metadata standard, which can help exchange data sets a data model or a set of data models like EMC data model from, from this perspective and more flexible data models from the, from the grid perspective. Um, the OEO, which Christian is going to have a talk on, a group on like have, establishing a common language between these models and on an ontology, knowledge graph engineering and um, stuff like in the front end, we have the academy um, to teach research data management um, 
and provide infrastructure for modeling teams so you don't have to take care about all the data nerding stuff. Um, so we join forces on data. Um, the fact sheets as well, um, I will go to this uh, later on. So um, after this block of commercial for my own projects, um, I try to have a block now on evolution of infrastructures because um, a lot of ideas came from the open mod, came from these workshops and were exchanged like crazy ideas from that time. Okay, let's have let's uh, archive or let's let's have a catalog of all models that exist. We did this yesterday in the training as well. Like who is doing what on which model? How are they named? What do they do? So the open mod forum started with um, with a basic set of uh, fact sheets for models and frameworks mixed a little bit together. There are around 85 models, only open models. Um, in 2016, we started a more advanced version, which we call version 2.0, the OEP fact sheets. We divided them into frameworks and models because like pipes or UMOF, they are like ecosystems and they are specific models that need to be described differently. Um, we have now archived over 230 models. Yesterday, I entered some, uh, I think, five new ones that I did knew before. Um, so this is the largest collection of existing modeling world. And you see, it's quite large. Um, we are now working on a third version of the fact sheets. It's based on knowledge graph engineering and the ontology. So the problem is the one model calls it energy carrier. The other one calls it a a source. So how do we compare them? So by com using the ontology that we are working on, we try to create a more um, holistic view on these and con connect the data of the models, the fact sheets, and the metadata together. So this is point three. It's uh, currently in the alpha mode. It's going to be released next year. So this is the evolution of the fact sheets, and we are happy to, to contribute to that. Um, the next one is data sets. The open mod has a quite large collection of data sets in the wiki. Who has used that before? So I click through it and around 50% of the links are broken at the moment. And it's a good overview of worldwide data sets existing. In 2015 to 2017, there was the OPSD project, which released five um, data packages. So they took up this idea of collecting data sources, make them in one format and republish them um, on a platform. Um, and based on this and on based on the, on the OPSD data, metadata sets, we developed the OE metadata standard, our flexible, universal, and ontology ready metadata for energy data related. Um, and at the moment, we are working at the energy data bus. There was a uh, training yesterday. So we have a common entry point to register all data in, um, in a knowledge graph engineering way. The energy data bus has been developed by DBpedia. And we are using this technology of linked open data to create a more flexible and up-to-date version of a common entry point for data sets. It's a distributed a technology for distributed databases. So we can connect YASA databases, the so OEP open data, you can add Synodo data sets, you can add your GitHub data sets. So we have one point where you can find and register um, and data. So this a, is a large in evolution of writing together sources and developing infrastructures that can be used by everybody. Um, of course, the glossary at the open mod started. We started with a list of terms. There are around 200, 300 terms and definitions. We try to, to do like definitions, synonyms, and subterms. And the technology of the wiki was, was limited. So the idea, we, we went to the University of Magdeburg ontology experts, and they taught us how to create real upper structures, upper structure ontologies. Um, so the OEO was born out of this. We have monthly releases, over 30 people contributing to it, um, and around 1,400 classes and 15,000 axioms. We estimated a sector-coupled energy system model has to have around five to 10,000 
classes. So we are a good way in that direction of covering everything. So now we have the most important stuff covered. Um, and in the next years, we want to speed up this process of covering all concepts around the um, energy world. Christian is going to have a, um, a breakout group on that. Again. So, um, of course, this is some of the, the, the structure. Um, it's um, the BFO, a universal system of how to name stuff. We don't invent the structure. We use existing ones um, for processes, for qualities. Um, so you can have all different parts of the energy world connected to a universal system. Of course, like one of the challenges is to go from this ontology to go to the knowledge graphs and all these AI technologies around ChatGTP and what's coming up in the last uh, couple of years um, is based on these kinds of technologies. So this is the way we go in the future in the next years uh, to combine these technologies and make them um, AI ready. So this is a, a, an ex, a small example. You have a data set, it's called generating capacity. What do you mean by it? Is it the capacity of the transformer? Is it, uh, do you mean the own consumption of the wind turbine? Is it, what is it exactly? So you can say, okay, I use this class from the ontology, it's a declared net capacity. So it's 100% clear, I mean this. Um, and uh, so we have a clear definition and we are working on a team with a large team on this definitions and these universal concepts, but always the data owners and the modelers, they have to, to select which one they mean. From the outside perspective, you cannot identify what do you, did you mean by capacity. So it's a community effort and we provide the infrastructure that everybody can use. So this is like a part of the ontology, um, a tree-like form um, where you can extract parts and view your part in detail. You can explore it. And that next one can zoom in, like what is the difference between a PV panel? Is a PV panel a generator or not? Or is it, is it the module or is it the, the converter? So we try to, to break up these things and have them like really in a structured way um, that everybody understands. Of course, we do make mistakes and everybody's invited to, to contribute and update this kind of information. It's a CC0 license, so you, are have, uh, you can you do whatever you want with it. So um, the last part, um, a participation. So we have now a, uh, a workshop together. Um, there's going to be uh, a lot of sessions. There's going to be some, some talks. Um, I found this in one of the old slides uh, at the um, feedback from the open mod um, in Berlin. And this is what the people said. And I think this sums up quite good what I expect from this open mod. It's a friendly, inspiring and open place, a welcoming and positive environment for everybody to share their ideas and knowledge. Um, um, perhaps we do some, some, something like this in the, in the, uh, tomorrow in the end for the feedback session. Um, and uh, Will already had a really nice code of conduct yesterday. So uh, I took up this idea of uh, have, uh, having my last slide on, um, on this as well. Um, we want to have a positive environment for this community. We don't want um, any kind of harassment. We, don't, we want to have demonstrate empathy, kindness and towards all people here. We are different. We have different opinions. We have different models. We need to argue, but we need to be fair and need to express our views in a good manner. Give respect and accept constructive feedback. Um, accept responsibility and apologize for those. If you make mistakes, that's okay, but apologize for that. Focus on what is best for the community, not for us as individuals. Um, and something that I didn't put on the, on the slide, but I think is really important, in these discussions, try to be active and also give room for the people who are not as present and active and loud. I consider myself quite room taking. I'm really tall and loud and argue. I like to argue. So I also want to say, 
to myself, step a little bit back, give room for the quiet people, for the people who are not used to speak um, and make this open mod a good experience for all of you. And I think this, ah yeah, interaction part. Um, who of you have participated in open mod before? Yeah, quite a lot. Who has uh, participated in more than one? And more than two? And more than three? And four and five? So that's, that's good. That's a good good share of new people. Um, who of you have ever commented, posted on the Open Mod Forum? So everybody who hasn't done it yet, you have to post three times during this workshop. <laughs> So three posts per person for the next two days. This is, this is the aim. If you don't do it, I won't control it, but this is a good measure of start interacting. The open mod forum is a place for you to communicate. For document stuff, it's going to be archived and it's our long-term memory. And perhaps now an open round, what is your main goal for this workshop? Who, why are you here? Please use the, let's test the microphones and I'm happy to see your ideas and your goals. So perhaps who volunteers first? What's your main goal? Uh, I'm here actually from my institute side who is taking first baby steps to open things, learn open source modeling and open data to, to be here, learn and bring the knowledge back to today's. Nice, thank you very much. And. Uh, now we are taking baby steps towards moving on in the open direction, but there's not much know-how uh, that we have, so we have to learn a lot, and that's one of the reasons why I'm here as well. Nice, thank you. Please, yes. Uh, okay, so it's my first uh, meeting here. Uh, uh, Okay, so it's my first uh, meeting here. I've commented on the forum, but I've never met any of you in person. So I'm very much looking forward to getting to know all of you in person or as many as possible. Uh, and also I'm very much looking forward to feedback on my poster, which is out there. So I'm very much looking <laughs> yeah. forward to that. Oh, yeah, nice. I haven't counted the poster sessions. This was missing. Thanks very much. Um, of course, we have posters. Um, a missing data point. <laughs> Okay. Hi, hello everyone. Um, I'm here more to you know like meet other researchers and discover or I mean yeah discover other methodology way of thinking in the modeling and especially I, I wasn't really familiar with all the IAM and um, I'm very enthusiastic to I mean all the yesterday what we have seen uh, I was really interested in it so this is kind of my way of doing my uh, lit literature review <laughs> also it <laughs> participate to it. Yes, talking about literature is really an important part of the open mod as well, like exchanging papers and um, and discussing your results, of course, not only like in, inside the code and the stuff, but also like how do we present our results. Yes, and some at some open mods, we did like a large introduction round so everybody could um, speak up a little bit um, and present yourself. Hey, Robbie, please, yes. Um, I'd just like to mention that um, this, um, open analysis is moving into the global south. Um, two initiatives, one from the osmosis community and one from the pipes community especially, um, but other projects as well. Um, and I see this bridging um, into say countries in Africa or Asia or South America um, as being um, a very useful development that coming out of this open analysis. Yeah, really good point. Yeah, as a sociologist and political scientist, I'm uh, like interested in peaking into your EU community. And as I'm having a research on uh, energy sufficiency scenarios, so how to model scenarios with really low energy demand, I would also like to find collaborators who would like to do this. Really nice point. I didn't see Frau because she was on the list, like one of the founders of the Open Mod, and she did the, um, a database on sufficiency. So there's, if, if she's coming, then uh, I will point you to that. That's another good point. Like if you know somebody's working on something, point them to them and bring them together. 
uh, we have a lot of coffee breaks um, and uh, room for exchange. Please. Hi, so uh, I, I'm wearing, well, probably most people are, I'm wearing a few hats here, but I, I work academically on open modeling in one way or another, but I also have an advisory role with the National Energy Agency, Statistical Agency, and their culture and their traditions would not favor openness generally. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to help shift the culture a little bit. So I'd be really interested in anybody who has experience. So obviously the people here are already bought into the philosophy and the culture of open modeling conveying that message and persuading people who are not yet there uh, to come on board with that. I'd, I'd be interested in hearing any particularly success stories uh, of doing that. Thanks. Yeah, that's a good point. Sharing, share your what is working and share what's not working yet. So this is a good summary of um, what I expect for the next um, two days. And thank you very much uh, for giving this opportunity.